Well, that's EEG. Let's look at some imaging studies. Brain PET. Do you do much brain PET here at this university? There's a professor of radiology there. Good. Our professor of radiology. This is FDG PET done at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, a pilot study, Andrew Newberg, very famous for his brain imaging work uh, of different mental states, was the first author. So what has been found that during the practice of meditation, there's an increase in uh, blood flow to the frontal cortex or the prefrontal cortex. There's a decrease in blood flow to the thalamus there is a decrease in blood flow to the basal ganglia. So the authors of this study suggested that during the meditative state, there's a decrease in activity related to decreased blood flow to the somatosensory and somatomotor lower brain centers. But there's an increase in activity to the frontal and prefrontal cortex. And this may very well correlate with experiences of heightened alertness, this relaxed alertness with the frontal cortex, the higher brain center, but less activity, less somatomotor and less somatosensory activity. This is resting. So restful alertness may, may explain this, this uh, pet pattern. We couldn't do brain imaging without doing functional MRI. This is a study led by Z.H. Cho at University of California, Irvine. And this was a randomized trial where we brought naive subjects into the laboratory, stressed them while they're in the uh, fMRI. And these are the brain activation patterns of some representative subjects uh, uh, undergoing laboratory stress. Pretty high levels of reactivity then uh, half the group learned meditation, retested five months later. And these are representative images of some of the subjects. Of course, it was quantified and statistically evaluated. But just to look at it qualitatively, you can see there's fewer orange dots. There are fewer areas of brain activation. There was a reduced reactivity to stress in the laboratory uh, with a program of meditation for five months. In the cardiovascular area, in the hypertension area, there's a whole school of thought that, that reactivity to stress causes cardiovascular reactivity, blood pressure surges, heart rate surges, and that contributes, may contribute to long-term hypertension in some people, and also may contribute to vascular damage with these surges of sympathetic output and, and accelerate atherosclerosis. So from a pure neurologic and neuropsychological point of view, this is intriguing about the brain basis of reduced stress reactivity. And then neurocardiologically, it may contribute to effects on CBD.